Well, now back to our top story tonight. The Foreign Secretary has denied that the security services get around the laws on surveillance by using American intelligence. That, of course, follows the astonishing interview by the whistleblower Edward Snowden, who was an American intelligence operative who has revealed the scale of American internet snooping. Joining me now is General Jonathan Shaw, the former head of cybersecurity at the Ministry of Defence. And in Geneva is Caspar Bowden, the former chief privacy advisor at Microsoft. Uh, General Shaw, first of all, did the head of cybersecurity at the MOD know about PRISM? No, I don't think he did. Uh, That's that a bit was... odd, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was in the detail. I, I was in charge for two years and at the top level strategy. What was quite happening between the two organisations, I don't know. So, uh, Why can't we have a more grown-up conversation with the government about this? You know, they, they won't admit exactly how they're using the intelligence. That wouldn't compromise anything if they said, yes, we do use it. Well, I think you are. Aren't we treated like children? <laughs> I think uh, actually, I very much welcome a more open debate about cyberspace and cybersecurity because I do think one of the features about the whole debate is its lack of maturity, and it's really because I think the whole cyber world has taken people by surprise, and people still like to think of cyberspace as either a very secure place or somewhere where there's total freedom, uh, and neither of those are true. It's an insecure medium, and there need to be constraints on our behaviours in cyberspace as elsewhere. Um, Casper Bowden, is Edward Snowden a hero? In your mind? Well, I think he's a very brave man. I think he's put his future at risk for essentially fighting for the privacy of the rest of the world. Because a point I think that needs to be brought out here is President Obama was able to reassure Americans that this law was, as it were, not of concern to them, precisely because it does not apply to Americans. So the first question we have to ask is what kind of law can be applied to us, which isn't OK for Americans. I've been making a study of this law very carefully for the past two years because I do think it creates fundamental problems and conflicts with what we think of as data protection. In other words, we always t sort of have the touchstone of the Data Protection Act in this country. Ministers use it as a kind of fig leaf. But it turns out the Data Protection Act has an enormous loophole. And this loophole allows, in fact, political spying. Uh, to be done in a way which has nothing to do with terrorism, nothing to do with serious crime. This law in America but could be used simply to spy on people who are campaigning against US foreign policy. But what is the scale of it? I mean, you used to work at Microsoft. What is your understanding of how this was done and, and what kind of access American intelligence had to people like Microsoft, Yahoo, Apple and all the rest? Because they all deny that they had open access to the servers, but what kind of access do you think it was? Well, I think the first thing I should say is I had no knowledge of this when I was at Microsoft. I heard rumours of, frankly, things that this might have been at the time, but my job was not legal compliance. My job was to provide advice to Microsoft's relationship building to governments, if you like, and advise privacy in that context. But what we understand, and really we only have the newspaper reports to go on, is that some kind of black box has been positioned inside Microsoft, Google, Yahoo and the rest, and the purpose of this box is to receive electronic orders about what sort of surveillance is to be carried out and the kind of searching for targets inside Facebook, inside Microsoft, inside Google. The product of these searches is then put into the box. We don't know yet whether that's automated. And then that box is used by the National Security Agency to retrieve that information. Okay. And this matches, up, this matches up precisely with the analysis of the law in question, which I've been doing. Let me just bring in General Shaw. I mean, part of the problem is that, the, again, the politicians aren't being up front with us about what kind of people they wanted to, to monitor and whether it was political or whether it was terror-related or whether it was crime or something else. I mean, what's your understanding of it? Well, I, I don't know the operational details, so let's talk about, about that. But, but would it, it would be wrong for, the, for ministers to authorise political spying, for well, example. Well, that is for the politicians to decide, so don't let me second-guess then. My sense would be that the only... that GCHQ is so strapped for resource that actually their real interest is in terrorist cases. I don't think they're remotely interested in, in, in the politics. Uh, and although there are uh, possibilities of being used in wider areas, my strong sense would be that they'd be, they'd, they'd be hard down on the targets to national security. So I think this is a real national security issue, not a wider issue. Although what you're suggesting is that there is a possibility of a wider application of this law, which is something I don't know about, and clearly politicians will be interested in. But the, the, the message from on high is, is, don't worry, it's all fine, you can trust us. <laughs> and, and a lot of people just don't.
Well, I think that says something about the state of, of trust in government, so I quite understand your point. And inevitably, there's going to be a question. You know, there is no such thing as total freedom, there's no such thing as total security. Somewhere or other, we need to draw the balance. And if we're now having a mature debate about behaviours in cyberspace, actually, I think that's a good thing, because I think there have been some pretty naive impressions about, about the sort of... Uh, the ability of the, of the intelligence agencies to operate in cyberspace and also about the freedoms of individuals to put things out there in, in, in cyberspace. As your previous reporter said, Question, I... people need to take more care about what they put in cyberspace because it's an insecure medium. Casper Bowden, I mean, can we trust governments? Well, I think we're missing the point here because it's, it's certainly important to investigate what use GCHQ has made of this system, but fundamentally the legal situations are different. What we have to understand, it's the unfettered power of the Americans to find out what we're doing in Britain. And I just want to read you the sentence which describes the breadth of this power. This power can be used by the United States to investigate anything which, with respect to a foreign territory that relates to the conduct of the foreign affairs of the United States. It's that broad. It can be used effectively for anything. And the United States is able to exercise this surveillance power over what British people are doing, what European people are doing, in total secrecy. There is no channel of accountability for the British government to find out comprehensively what use have been made of this power, because the Americans exercise it unilaterally, or they can do, without telling us. So what, what do you and say moreover, to those people who say, you know, what have you got to fear? Do you know what I mean? What, and what, first of all, what do you expect? Uh, you know, when it comes to your email and your social media and all the rest of it. And secondly, if you're not doing anything wrong, what have you got to fear? Well, let me answer that. There are reasons why a government can abuse the power to surveil its own people. There are court systems, there are ways of gaining redress. But if the Americans were to abuse this power to interfere in the private lives of Britain for espionage, but then there is no recourse. It is impossible, legally impossible, for anybody in Europe to bring a case to investigate to find out what happens if this power is abused by the Americans. And remember, this is a power which is, whatever it is doing, it, however broad it is, the Americans have said is not acceptable to do to Americans, but yet somehow it's supposed to be acceptable to do to us. General Shaw, that is the so. key to this, isn't it? And the I Americans you... are doing to us what they would not dream of doing to their own citizens. And I think that's a very strong point, and I have to admit that I didn't know that about, about PRISM. I think this is a revelation. We're learning all about it today, and I quite understand the political concern why people want to ask questions about that. And, and, and do, you, do you think they, that, that that will be the real attitude inside Whitehall? I think you're already hearing that is the attitude in Whitehall. People are already asking those questions. Well, uh, General Shaw and Casper Valden, thank you both very much indeed.